Nigeria is divided into three major ethnic groups. They include the Hausas, Igbo, and the Yoruba. Coincidentally, these ethnic groups are separated into the north, east, and west of Nigeria according to their geographical locations. Other minor ethnic groups exist in Nigeria, but they spread across the country. For example, the Fulani from the northern Nigeria live among the Hausas, the Yoruba people from the southern Nigeria live among the Niger Delta and Igbo people. The Biobo people also live among the Igbos, and also the teeth from the middle belt of Nigeria that hail from Benue State are more closer to the Northerners or the Hausas. These only are just a few among the many other minor ethnic groups in Nigeria. People from the three major ethnic groups will have major roles to play in the history and memorable events to come in Nigeria after the independence of Nigeria from the British colonial masters in 1960. After the independence, a short lived democratic government was set up. And for the first time in the history of Nigeria, there was a ruling president. His name is Dr. Unamdi Azikwe. The military, however, had constructed plans for the interim political government just in some few years to come after the independence on the 15th of January 1966. Rebellious soldiers of high ranks from the Nigerian military would spring into action to overthrow the current political government. The operation was led by Cardinal Izuku and four others to place Agri Yorosi as the military head of state. They killed prominent people in the government, including the Prime Minister of Nigeria, Sir Abubakar Tafawa Balewa, many senior politicians, many senior army officers and allies, and sentinels of protective duties. This was only the beginning of a series of coups planned by high ranking officers of the Nigerian military in an attempt to get a grip of power. In 1983, Nigeria already had a bad reputation of various militants executed by high ranking officers of the military to get a grip of power. By the year 1983, there had already been four successful coups in Nigeria, switching from different military governments and political governments. President Sheung Shakari, a politician, has been elected as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and has been ruling the country from 1979 to 1983. However, on the 6th of August 1983, President Shion Shagari will contest again at the presidential election to continue as the president of Nigeria on the second term. The election was held in Nigeria on the 6th of August 1983 and will go in favor of the ruling president. His dream of second term is more alive than ever before. But the fifth coup on the 31st of December 1983, led by Major General Mohamed Buhari, disposed the democratically elected president from office. On that very day, Major General Mohamed Buhari became the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces of Nigeria and the head of the whole country. To seize his grip of power, he will entrust power to loyal military officers like Tude Idiago to propel his government administration to another level. He made him to become the Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of Nigeria. Tude Idiago is known by many to be the second in command and the face of the Buhari's regime. Major General Idi Agbon went building the Agbon on March 6, 1970, and the two went on to have two boys and three daughters together. He was elevated to the rank of Major that same year. Later, he was promoted to Brigade Major and served as the 33 Deputy Commander from March 1970 to March 1971, as well as 29 Brigade Commander from March 1971 to Ma December 1972. In January 1973, he was appointed General Staff Officer and Principal Staff Officer at Supreme Military Headquarters, he was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel in 1974. From August 1975 to August 1978, he served as Brigade Commander for the 31st and 15th Brigades. In 1976, Major General Idi Agbon attended the Command and Staff College in Quetta, Pakistan for more military training. In July 1978, he was promoted to Colonel. In October 1979, he was named Director of Manpower and Planning at Army Headquarters. In May 1980, he was promoted to Brigadier General. He studied at the National Institute of Policy and Strategic Studies in Kuru, just Plateau to State, Nigeria, in 1981, and in Naval Postgraduate School in the United States in 1982. He served as Nigerian Army Military Secretary from 1981 to 1983 and was promoted to Major General in 1985. 
From August 1978 to October 1979, Nigeria's military head of state, General Obasanjo, designated Major General Idiagon as military administrator of Bono State. He served as Supreme Headquarters Chief of Staff from December 31, 1983 to August 27, 1985. He was a significant figure in Buhari's military regime. In the Loring Kora State of September 14, 1943, Major General Babatunde Idiagbon was born into Azan Dogu and Aisha Iyabiji Azan Idiagbon families from 1950 to 1952. He attended United Primary School in Loring and from 1953 to 1957, he attended Okisuna Senior Primary School in Loring. From 1958 to 1962, he attended the Nigerian Military School in Zaria for his secondary school. He enrolled at the Nigerian Military Training College, NMTC, in 1962 to become a member of the Nigerian Army. The college was renamed the Nigerian Defense Academy, NDA, in 1964 of February. Major General Idi Agon studied for bachelor degree in economics from 1962 to 1965 at Pakistan Military Academy, Abu Tabad, Pakistan. In April 1965, after traveling from Pakistan to Nigeria, he was commissioned as second lieutenant. He served as the 4th Battalion Company Commander from 1965 until February 1966. He studied at the Nigerian Defense Academy in Kaduna, Nigeria in 1966, where for junior commander course. He also worked as a general staff officer, 3rd Intelligence, 1st Sector, and an intelligence officer, 4th Battalion from 1966 to 1967. In 1966, he received a promotion to lieutenant. He assumed command of the 20th Battalion in October 1967 and served until February 1968. He received a promotion to captain in 1968. He also became the commander at 125 Battalion from 1968 to 1970. After being accepted into Nigerian Military Training College in Kaduna in 1961, he enlisted in the Nigerian Army. In January 1963, he was commissioned as second lieutenant after completing the officer cadet training at Mons Officer Cadet School in Landershot, England, from 1962 to 1963. From 1963 to 1964, he participated at Platoon Commander's course at the Nigerian Military College in Kaduna. Later, he was sent to the 2nd Infantry Battalion in Abeokuta as platoon commander. He participated in the Army Mechanical Transport School's Mechanical Transport Officers course in Bowling, England in 1965. Additional military training took place at the U.S. Army War College in June 1979 to June 1980 and the Defense Staff Service College in Wellington, India in 1973. Throughout his distinguished military career, President Buhari, a highly esteemed officer, held the number of important command and staff positions in addition to political appointments. Among them were the following Chairman of the Nigerian National Petroleum Commission, Federal Commissioner of Petroleum Resources, Military Secretary, Member of the Supreme Military Council, Military Governor of the Northeastern States, General Officer Commanding 4th Infantry Division, General Officer Commanding 3rd Armored Division. General Mohamed Buhari emerged as the head of state and commander in chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces following the military coup in December 1983. He held his rule until August 1985. Adamu Anzulaiha Buhari welcomed President Buhari into the world on December 17, 1942, in Daura, Castina State. After his father passed away while he was just four years old, President Buhari was raised by his mother. From 1948 to 1952, he completed his elementary education in Dura, Maidua. In 1953, he enrolled in Kasuna Middle School. He afterwards studied from 1956 to 1961 at Kasuna Provisional Secondary School, now known as Government College Kasuna, where he graduated with a West African School certificate. From 1971 to 1988, President Buhari was way to Safina to Yusuf. From 1989, he has been married to Aisha Alailu. He is fortunate to have 10 kids. After 
of Lowry Coop was executed on the 31st of December 1983, the new government wasted no time in making a radio announcement to the general public about the ascension to power. Many people had mixed feelings about the new government. Some said it for the better since the politician had been so corrupt and that this was an open opportunity for positive changes. Why some didn't like the new military government as they lamented that the military force for power is ash. However, whatever feelings or thoughts people had in mind about the new government, whether true or not, will unfold in the event to come in 1984 and 1985. After Buhari's announcement about his accession to power, he wasted no time in stating his manifesto and the agenda of his new government. He also stated new decrees and policies that his government administration will implement, one of which is the fight against corruption. Buhari made it clear that his government had zero tolerance to corruption and offenders will be severely persecuted. During his rule, some greedy people hold essential food items like beans and rice in warehouses in order to hike the price and therefore exploit people. As soon as the warehouse location was discovered, he wasted no time in seizing such sites and giving the food back to the general public at a reduced price. The good aspect of this act is not just seizing the warehouse but giving the food back to the general public in an orderly organized manner, making use of proper straight line queue, any offenders who were severely persecuted. This act was carried out by soldiers and it showed no mercy to offenders. Another degree was made to fight against indiscipline. It was called Why? War Against Indiscipline. I want you to bear in mind the need to emphasize self-discipline and leadership by good Example, begin by drawing public attention to little but important everyday manifestations of indiscipline, such as rushing into buses, driving on the wrong side of the road, littering the streets, parks, and dwelling compounds, cheating, taking on due advantage of scarcity to inflate prices for quick monetary gains, constituting ourselves into public nuisances, working without commitment, and devoting little or no time to the upbringing of our children. Up to this moment, there has been no formal declaration of war against indiscipline. It is my pleasure, therefore, to declare today the launching day for the war against indiscipline. The objective is to enforce organization, discipline, punctuality, and orderliness among the general public, such as queuing in the public gathering, public bus stop, or any government establishment that renders services to the public. This was necessary because Nigerians are very disorganized. Barry Partner Major General Babatunde Abubaki Diago and his chief of staff is a recording force of the Buhari Ministry of Administration, an expert in his field and a workaholic. He went to great extent to implement those policies and punish the offenders no matter their status in the society. The use of soldiers to enforce the new decree brought great fear to most people, as they mostly use brute force on people. For example, urinating in public is viewed as an act of indiscipline and offenders are severely punished by the soldiers as they were either whipped or forced to do community service. Most times, the punishment mostly include wiping people with whips, also known as koboko, paying fines, and participating in community service. Major General Babatunde Abubaki Diagon studied economics at the Pakistan Military School. This explained the wise policies introduced to restructure the bad economy of Nigeria. President Buhari gave him total freedom without limit to enforce whatever policies he desired, and he did just so. When asked, people described Major General Babasundi Abubaki Diagbon as a man of action, a workaholic, a dedicated person. Some say he is so serious that he hardly smiles. He was feared a lot in the ministry, and many of his subordinates ensured that they carried out their duties well to avoid daring consequences. Major General Babatunde Abubaki Diagbon was not just a dedicated man, but a very hardworking individual. His effects spread to other members of the military and even the whole country, as he was indeed a driving force. 
people people think that uh, things were hard at that time. But if we compare that time with the type of people living in Nigeria, we see that the that government really uh, shaped Nigeria at that time. There was discipline in the, in, the, in the society, Nigerian society, because uh, people are now people now see things. I do things in the right way. Many people say that Buhari was just a simple figurehead, while Idi Agbon was a man of action because he was the one who enforced the degree and ensured that everyone obeyed it. Because Idi Agbon was feared in the military, rebellious soldiers found no weak points in the Buhari administration and therefore saw no opportunity to overthrow the government. They knew that if they were caught, it would result to their permanent doom or destruction. So they waited patiently, looking for the perfect time to strike. The Buhari strong military regime, backed by Major General Babatunde Abubaki Idiagbon, that seemed unbreakable, would stand the test of fate in the year 1985. Major General Babatunde Abubaki Idiagbon is a workaholic. He ensured that everyone carried out their task when due and punishes lockbreakers severely. So throughout Buhari's regime, he never travelled abroad until one day when he got an invite directly from the Prince of Saudi Arabia to attend Hajj at Mecca for prayers. Apart from being a dedicated military officer, Major General Babatunde Abubaki Idiagbon is also a God-fearing man. This invite perhaps seems like a little break from the intense work and effort he has been making toward the Buhari government for the past two years he has been in office. Like the popular saying says, all work and no play make Jack a dull boy. However, the decision to honor this invitation will result in a devastating blow and fatal mistake. Due to a diligence and dedication, Buhari government had no weak point. However, Major General Babatunde Abubaki Diagbon's absence exposes vulnerability in the Buhari's government, leaving an open window of opportunity for enemies to strike. As other high ranking officers had no fear for Buhari himself, but they feared his right hand man. In fact, Major General Babatunde Abubaki Diagbon is the reason why the Buhari government is still standing up to this moment. The officers feared the severe consequences they could face if they attempted a coup. They knew that it would only result in their permanent destruction. But just some few days after Major General Babatunde Abubaki Diagon traveled abroad to Mecca for the prayers, he received the shocking news that his government had been overthrown. Buhari easily surrendered the government to them after being threatened. Pain struck Babatunde Diagon even to his bone, filling it with anger, anguish, and vengeance. He immediately started making plans to get back to Nigeria to launch a counter coup in an attempt to regain power. But he was advised against it. Major General Babatunde Abubaki Diagon will spend the remaining few days in Mecca to complete his prayers and then finally return to Nigeria. But to his dismay, the current government already prepared to receive him. So on his arrival to Nigeria, he was immediately arrested and taken to his home, where he was placed under house arrest for 24 hours surveillance and close monitoring. This frustrated his efforts of attempting to organize a counter coup, leaving him with no hope but to accept defeat and surrender. Major General Babatunde Abubaki Diagbon, the Great, and the Buhari government has finally fallen. Some say that his invitation to Mecca was orchestrated by his enemies as a distraction to lure him out and overthrow the government. The Buhari's government was succeeded by Ibrahim Adamasi Babangida on the 27th of August 1985. As for Major General Babatunde Abubaki Diagbon, all charges against him will later be dropped and he will later retire to his hometown in Lahore with his family. But he sadly passed away on the 24th of March 1999. As for Buhari, he will continue to serve in the military for some years but will later enjoy political appointments in the future.
1994, Abasha administration named General Buhari executive chairman of Petroleum Trust Fund (PTA). His rigorous discipline and incorruptibility were the primary factors in his appointment to this role. Under General Buhari, the PTA immediately interfered in six primary areas: road construction and maintenance, water supply, educational materials delivery, and infrastructure restoration, health, food supply, and other programs. Throughout his four and a half years of operation, this interventionist program had an impact on the entire country. After the government was handed back to the civilian government in 1999, different politicians ruled Nigeria, but they ruled for a duration of four years and a maximum of eight years, with first and second term included. Buhari expressed his desire to rule the country again as a politician and will contest multiple times in the election over the years. However, his effort became victorious in the 2015 election and on the 29th of May 2015, he became the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. During President Mohamed Buhari's administration, he enforced policies to fight against corruption. Therefore, he brought about the whistleblower so that anybody can expose corrupt people. His administration also brought Nigeria to great economic recession and setback as there was multiple strike and protests by workers. On his second term as president, on the 28th of August 2020, there was a massive protest in Nigeria by the youth to end police brutality and bad government. The protest resulted in violence and killing of young protesters. Although President Mohamed Buhari claimed that there was legitimate grievance to the loss of lives, but protest was hijacked by miscreants and criminals. Toward the end of his administration in Nigeria, the currency Naira experienced serious devaluation as one US dollar equals 1000 Naira. Buhari administration ended in 2023 and the government was handed over to a new administration.